Hello YouTube, this is Odyssey checking in today with another Star Trek video tutorial. Um, as you know, I am a tricker by heart. I have made tutorials uh, to show how to run all Star Trek games on modern computers, and today is no exception to that rule. Um, I have chosen this classic simulation game, Star Trek Captain's Chair. Uh, a lot of people uh, may remember this one on their computer, and I'm pretty sure if you remember this game, you have some pretty fun and nice memories about it. For those of you who don't know it, Star Trek Captain's Chair uh, was uh, one of the first attempts to make a 3D simulation environment uh, that was uh, interactive at some point. Uh, the game allows you to jump into the bridge of the five iconic starships from the five different series in the Star Trek saga and um, to play around with the consoles, to move around um, the iconic sec sections that were featured in the series um, that goes from the classic uh, Enterprise from the original series and all the way to the USS Spodiger. Now, um, this was awesome of course back in the days, uh, it's, it was not just a simulation, uh, the disc itself contained a lot of um, technical information from the lore of Star Trek, um, a bunch of director notes, um, a bunch of side notes about the filming, I mean it was, it was an encyclopedia of the show itself. And we're talking that back in those days there was nothing else like it, and um, it was like bringing a book to life and allowed you to play with it. It made it an interactive experience. It's sad, but today we do not see a lot of these um, kind of attempts to bring this, uh, these environments to, uh, regarding the, at least for Star Trek, which is quite abandoned these days, this day and age. And uh, to be honest with you, to make it run is not an easy task. If you follow these steps in this video, uh, you shouldn't have any problem. We're gonna. Uh, and this tutorial is meant for Windows 7, 32 bits, and 64 bits. As far as Windows 8 and Windows 8.1 users, the theory says that it should work with you guys as well. However, I do not have a system anymore to test it myself on Windows 8. So, uh, you can follow the steps anyway and give it a shot. None of the th stuff that we are going to do here is going to harm your system at all. So, you know, feel, uh, help yourself and give it a try. And as I said, in theory, it should work with no promises. This tutorial is mostly meant for Windows 7 users. Now, it's as I said, it's not an easy task. We're going to need to download uh, a couple of things. As usual, I'm going to try to make all the tools available to you guys from uh, my share uh, cloud storage uh, in the description. So let's start with it. Okay, now uh, it is checklist time. What are we going to need to accomplish this ambitious goal we just set in our minds? And uh, the first thing you're going to need is Microsoft Virtual PC 2007 and the Service Pack 1 for that Virtual PC. You might be wondering, why do I need to use Virtual PC and why exactly the 2007 one? Well, very easy. Because we're going to be running this image, uh, this game, on a Windows 98 second edition virtual machine and that is going to be your second requirement at this point and uh, I am deeply sorry here I cannot help you with that one I cannot provide you uh, with a copy of Windows 98 however I am confident that you are very resourceful people and you'll be able to get your hands on a Windows 98 um, either image or disk for this special occasion the third requirement, it's only a requirement if you're using an AMD processor. If you're an AMD user, watch out, you're going to need this free tool which is called Hide87. It's going to help to hide uh, the 87th processor part on the virtual machine. It's going to save you from a lot of hangs and it's going to make your experience stable. Otherwise, this is not going to work for you. And uh, finally, the last thing you're going to need is a physical copy of the game itself. Now, if you have that at this point, congratulations, hats off, you have a piece of history in your hands and you, you are great. Congratulations. However, 
If you do not have the physical copy of the disc, fear not, because I have included an image file of the game on the description. You can download it from my cloud storage. And yes, it is legal. This is abandonware as far as I'm concerned today. So it's um, when it's abandonware, it's free for everyone. So help yourselves with a copy of the game down there. Now, if you are going to be using the image file that I'm providing, you are going to need either a program to burn the image file into a physical disk, I recommend Image Burn for that, or you are going to need another program to mount it into a virtual drive to make believe your computer uh, the image file is a, it's a physical disk. All right, and for that, I recommend Daemon Tools. Both of the links are in the description, and yes, both of the tools are free and very easy to use. Now, I'm going to make a small pause in here because at this point, um, most of the new gamers, new users, are going to have a lot of questions. What is an image file? Uh, what does it mean by mount it? What does it mean by burn it? Uh, uh, what is a virtual machine? I know that a lot of people is going to get those questions in their minds and I will be needing a whole different video for each one of those questions to clarify to you. So this is what I'm going to do for you guys. I'm going to write the frequently asked questions uh, note, uh, notepad that you can download also from the description and that there you should find the answers to these questions. If it's, if it's still not clear uh, with the answers I'm providing then you can always complement the information with Google itself. All right, uh, my bad, but if I explain every single detail on this one, we're gonna end up with a two hour and a half video. And we want to make this fast, we want to make this good, and we want to get this to work ASAP. Now, get your checklist. If you have everything that we need, then it's time to set up. Okay, let's download the Virtual PC 2007. You, just, you want to download uh, first of all, uh, the virtual machine. When you click on download, uh, it's going to prompt you for which version do you want to download, and this should match your operating system, either a 32-bit system or a 64-bit system. If you don't know which one do you have, press on your keyboard the Windows key and the pause break key at the same time, and you're going to get your answer right there. Right, 64-bit operating system or 32-bit. Actually, if it's 32, it's gonna say uh, x86. All right, consider that 32 bits. No time for explanations. <laughs> now, once that you have selected uh, the appropriate setup file, just download it, um, and also start downloading the service pack one. Same instructions. I have already downloaded both of them here. We got the setup and the service pack. So the first one I'm going to run is a setup. The reason I want you to see this is because uh, perhaps a lot of you have never installed the the, uh, the virtual machine client ever, and you probably have a lot of questions in your mind about the appropriate setup. Don't worry, it's just like any other setup, honestly. So let's click on next. You accept the agreement. Blah blah blah. You get a product key because it's free. I want this only for me. And it's going to tell you where it's going to install it. By default, it's going to do the programs files uh, x86. This is if you're running a 64 bit system. If you're not, then you are not going to see the numbers. You can change it to any other directory you can. I recommend you to leave it on the default. Click install. Installation is pretty smooth and shouldn't take long. Okay, at this point if the installation just finished, just click on finish. Then you want to go for the service pack. Service pack 1.exe Yes. Same drill. Uh, this warning is in case that you install it and you have a virtual machine open or you have something saved uh, pretty much a service pack is telling you if you have something already done I'm going to mess it up so you better back up everything that you have that's why we're making the installation of the service pack right immediately after we install the, the tool so we're gonna hit OK there's nothing that we can lose on that one uh, 
and there you go and we're finished all right that concludes installation of the virtual PC the next step is to set up the virtual uh, machine with our Windows 98 second edition disk so I'm gonna be using an image file or you can use a physical disk I'll show you both ways well right now we want to launch the virtual PC after it is installed the installer is very seamless it's just like any other installer as I had previously mentioned and you get a welcome screen click on next we want to select the first option to create a virtual machine so that we can select all the options that we're going to need click on next uh, we enter the name of the virtual machine in my case I'm just gonna put in Windows 98 we highlight the name uh, well, um, you can put it in second edition if you have a different version if you're going to plan to get more um, more virtual machines on that one. Um, select the location where you want to put it. In my case, I'm just going to create a new folder uh, where I'm going to store all of the virtual machines I'm going to be using because, uh, at least in my case, this is not going to be the only one. We're going to click on Save. There you have the whole path. Click on Next and we got everything already set up by default uh, RAM memory virtual disk yeah, you want to go for the option of use the recommended RAM memory 64 megabytes in this case click on next and um, you're going to select the option to create a new virtual hard disk a, a virtual hard disk is just going to be a file that is going to simulate being a hard drive on the on the virtual machine so click on next it's going to ask where you want this virtual disk to be located the virtual disk is going to contain all the information of the virtual machine all right 16 gigabytes sounds good we click on next we get a summary and click on finish right now our virtual machine is ready to be configured you click on start and uh, you're going to get this uh, funny black screen and nothing is going to happen the reason nothing is happening is because you need to enter your image from the Windows 98 boot uh, CD or if you have the CD you can just put it into your tray and it's going to be detected by the virtual PC software in my case I have an image file so I'm just going to load it click on open and um, you will notice that nothing happens after I do that that's because we need to restart the virtual machine so you go to actions and reset now we're going to get the prompt you want to boot from CD-ROM remember that the virtual machine believes it has a CD on it select option number one to start Windows 98 setup from the CD and just wait for it there you go all oh, this really looks old but it's, it brings back some memories so just continue the setup as you will usually do for a Windows 98 computer just press enter select configure on allocated disk space we want to do that and yes we want to enable large disk support after that this is going to restart the virtual machine one more time hit enter and you want to boot again from the CD-ROM select option number one again press enter and there you go now it says this formatting the drive C don't worry this is not formatting your hard drive it's formatting the virtual hard drive that we created a few uh, a couple of minutes ago let me show you if you go into the settings this is what is being formatted it's this hard drive that we created hard disk 1 which is located there so don't worry not none of your information is being deleted or erased so relax <laughs> we just wait for it to finish we got 100% of the drive format press enter and uh, once the virtual machine finish uh, this setup the next time it reboots we can select the option to reboot from the hard drive okay so from here on it's just going to be a regular Windows 98 setup so it's pretty much continue set up your settings time and date a preferred language um, at some point it's going to ask for a product key so you need to get that one handy as well 
Um, if you have a CD, you can use that one or you can just use Google to get one. I'll see you when this is done. Okay, and so far so good. Right now we should be booting into Windows 98. Uh, probably you get some good memories during the setup process. Now um, here is what we need to do. Um, you're going to have your welcome screen. There are some additional features we need to install. For example, we're going to shared folder settings. You're going to see that that option is not available. So we cannot share folders right now. So we need to go to action and there is a part that says install or update virtual machine additions. Uh, you say yes and it's going to create a setup within uh, the virtual machine. If you don't see a setup coming up automatically then you gotta open... oh it came automatically. If it doesn't then you just have to open my computer and double click on the disk. That's it. Click on next and it's prompted for a restart. that sound. Anyway, if you go right now into the share folders option, you'll see that they are now enabled. Now we can share fo folders. Alright, so you click on share folder and right now you're browsing your local computer. I'm going to share my downloads folder because it's where I have the software that I'm going to need. Okay, and OK. So in this case we go to my computer and if we double click on C, guess what we're gonna find? All the software that is on my actual computer over here. Exact same one. I'm sorry for that, I was just looking for the image file. Uh, we just select capture is ISO image and there it is. And as usual, we're on the setup. No need to run as administrator back in the days, huh? <laughs> we click on next, next, and uh, yeah. We want to, we can leave that version of QuickTime. It's pretty much the same one we just installed. And uh, yes, accept the restart of the computer. Uh, Windows 98 just wanted to restart for every single change. Anyway, let's do it. You're going to uh, be very careful with this prompt when you're going to full screen. It's telling you how to exit the full screen mode, otherwise you're going to be pretty frustrated trying to figure out the key combination to go back. Alright, it says to access the host operating system that is your computer, you need to press and hold on your keyboard um, that is right alt plus the enter key. And as you can see, we get the same square. Cool, huh? Let's see if we can help the resolution a little bit. Properties. Maybe this will look a little bit better. Uh, well, yeah, there we have it. Right now it's looks better <laughs> than it did. Now we go to programs, hit the captain's chair, cross your fingers, click on the game and there you go. It's running just fine. Now I want to apologize because um, my capture card is not able to extract the audio from the from the virtual machine. I tried uh, all means, I, I can just cannot get the audio but trust me I have full sound on the on the game itself at, at this point. And well this is the welcome screen for Star Trek Captain's Chair. As you can see we have all of the five ships 
uh, that we can explore and it also includes the Enterprise E. <laughs> I forgot that it has the Enterprise E. Anyway, uh, from this point on, um, all the quick time animations should work. Let's start um, uh, with, uh, what do you say, the Sovereign? Uh, no, not really. Let's go with my favorite ship. Let's go with the Defiant. Let's click on the ship you want. And there you go. Welcome to the bridge of the USS Defiant. Um, well, uh, as I said, uh, there is full audio right now, so there is this uh, the voice of the computer just reading what we have there on the screen. I'm gonna make a small zoom here. There we go. That looks better. And um, well, it's a virtual simulation. Uh, you can walk around different stations and uh, start clicking on different positions. As you can see, all of the animations are working just fine. So let's say we want to go to that station over there the, the icon changes for the different actions that we can take um, this game is full of easter eggs is full of star trek lore is full of fun stuff that you can do uh, mini games um, behind the scenes uh, information i mean it's it's, <laughs> it's a whole paradise to explore and um, definitely a jewel that should be on your gaming connect on your gaming collection if you're a Star Trek fan. For example, if you click here on the panel from the captain's chair, and you click on one of these options, uh, here's one of the hidden Easter eggs. Uh, you get this um, interview uh, with um, uh, Captain Cisco, uh, well, with the actor that plays Captain Cisco, and. Um, other he explains, uh, well, uh, you, you, I better let you to see it <laughs> yourself. Um, you can also hit the ship exterior and uh, you're going to get that 3D render version of the ship uh, bridge you are in. And uh, well, <laughs> by today's standards, uh, the graphics are pretty outdated, but I gotta say, this was awesome back in the days. I mean, just look at that. There, there was nothing else like it uh, on those days. And well, that's pretty much it. Um, we, we managed to make this program run, which is uh, it was quite a challenge. Uh, it, uh, well, just to get the right settings and the, the programs that we need. Now, just remember AMD users uh, to install Hide 87 if you run into any problems from here on. Um, the reason is um, that if you're running an AMD processor, the virtual machine is going to have problems uh, running any application. So install Hide 87. I cannot do it myself because I'm using an Intel processor. So if I'll do that, I'll be <laughs> messing up with my own processor and causing damage into it. This is strictly designed for AMD. And the well, for the rest, I hope that you have fun. Thank you so much for staying around in another of these uh, Star Trek gaming tutorials. I'll try to search for um, the Star Trek technical manual, which is pretty similar to this one, but it's just focused on the Enterprise D uh, from the, the next generation. And it has all the information from the technical manual book <laughs> that came out a long, long time ago. So I'm going to try to make this run on the virtual machine and create a separate uh, video. We already have the virtual machine set up in here, so I'm just going to show you if it has any specific nuts and bolts that you need to set up for that one. And well, once again, thank you so much for staying around. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you can make this run on your computers. As usual, leave in the comments uh, any questions or anything that's in your mind. And if you like this video, then like this video and remember to keep subscribed to my channel for um, more gaming tutorials and useful stuff that uh, well you will not find anywhere else once again this is odyssey checking out happy gaming and see you out there